fun. Happy, uh, as I said last week, second 4th of July weekend. Although I think last week was really the 4th of July weekend because it was closer. Anyway, let's begin with prayer. <laughs> Lord, it's always a good day when we are with you. I don't think we always realize that. I don't think we always invite you into our day. But it's always a good day when we're with you. And so be with us now. Be with us. Help us to, uh, well, listen to the nuggets that hopefully you'll say through me. And let me hear what I need to hear and anybody who's listening, hear what they need to hear. But if they can't hear it here, let them delete me and go somewhere else to where they can hear what they need to hear from you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. The gospel for today comes to us from Matthew. It reads like this. Jesus said to the crowds, but to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they said, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens. And I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, I don't know if I've ever met anybody in my entire life who has had let's just say, a close relationship, a, a, a relationship of even friendship with someone else who hasn't walked away at least once or twice, or in my case, many times, and just said, I just can't win. I mean, let's put it on you. Those of you who are married, how many times has your spouse, you know, sort of made it sound like no matter what you try and do, you know, they just aren't happy about it. They just, you cannot satisfy. You know, and how many times are you like that where, well, maybe your spouse is trying as hard as they can, but you're just not satisfied. You're just not happy. I think that's what Jesus is trying to get across in the beginning of this gospel, where he says, basically, uh, what can I compare this generation to? It's like children in, in, in the marketplace. And, you know, I mean, we say to them, uh, well, I played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We, you know, uh, we wailed for you, but you didn't mourn. And then he says real clearly, he goes, you know, John the Baptist came eating and drinking. He said he had a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. I think I just screwed that up. So let me correct real. John came not eating and drinking. And they said he had a demon. Jesus came and said, was eating and drinking. And they said, he's a glutton and a drunkard. He's a friend of tax collectors. Here it is, the kingdom of God has come. God the Father wants to reveal himself to his people. He, he says all the time in, in, to the nation of Israel, all the way through from Abraham on, he says, hey, come to me and I'll give you rest. If you just come to me, I'll give you rest. And yet there never seemed to be a place where at least Israel or God's people sort of can sustain that rest. They might get a glimpse of it, but it's fleeting, that peace. Jesus goes on to say, real clearly, I thank my God that he's revealed the truth, basically, not to the intelligent and the wise, but to infants. You know, I often wonder, does he mean that literally or does he mean that figuratively? And I think it's a little bit of both. Because to really be a child of God, what do they say? You've got to be born again. So you've got to have somewhat of an openness that a child and only a child has. We learn real quick not to be open. But a child, when they're first 
born, when they're alive, the first couple of years, they are open to everything. And he says infant. He doesn't say even children. He says infant. And so we have to be like infants to receive the truth, to receive the kingdom, because otherwise what we do is somehow we try and talk ourselves out of it. We try and rationalize it the way we want it to be. We turn it into now, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was talking to the crowds, and he was basically saying this to them about, you know, you know, the burdens that are upon you. Come all you me that you know, have heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. You know, take my yoke upon you, you know, for I'm humble and gentle at heart. Learn from me. Learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Who he's saying that to is the people that crossed his path from the nation of Israel, the people that were common, most of the people that were poor. And he was talking about a couple of things that really did have the burdens on those people in those days. One of them was the fact that they were under, in a sense, they were in an occupied country. I mean, Rome was, was their overlords. Rome ran the show. But it was also because the temple authorities had taken what was given for the purpose of God's people, the good purpose of God's people, given the law, and they had made it more complicated than you could possibly imagine. They had it so overburdened. They had written so many extra laws on top of basically the simple few laws that God had given. They had basically taken over. And it was so much of a burden that the people, if they just listened to what they were told, they weren't going to get any rest. They weren't going to get any peace. They weren't going to get any. In fact, they couldn't even be righteous in the eyes of the temple because a lot of them were too poor to pay for the sacrifices and pay for the things. But they also had in those days the same thing that we have today. And that is a lot of burdens and a lot of things that fall upon us. I mean, think about it. Is your life easy or is your life somewhat, you know, sometimes really complicated. Does it seem simple or does it seem like, well, there's a lot coming at me? I mean, is it where you wake up in the morning and say, oh man, I'm so glad to be alive? Or do you sometimes wake up in the morning and say, oh, please let me just stay in bed? You see, I think that for a lot of us, we struggle in life. And in a lot of ways, I think people are much better about knowing how to survive than they are about living. And yet Jesus never came, I, it said, and I came to give, let you survive and just get by. He said, no, I came to give you life and life in all its fullness in John chapter 10, 10. Came to give you life and life in all its fullness. He wants you to say, a new day, what kind of possibilities are there? Instead of, oh, a new day, what kind of liabilities are ahead? And what Jesus is trying to get across is this. The people in those days, had taken so much burden on themselves that they couldn't do it. And they had, the temple authorities had changed the basic, in a sense, laws that God had given them that were simple, that would just keep them in the right parameters so they could flow easy and their souls could have rest. And they'd made them so cumbersome that they couldn't do it all. And Jesus said this, he says, look, don't let the yoke of what they've done to you control you. Let my yoke be upon you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And my yoke is easy. And the burden that you'll get is light. You know, I thought about that yoke. You know, because, you know, in a lot of ways, most of us in our lives, you know, I mean, you know, we try and be pleasing to other people. We try and win for the lack of a way, better way to put it. But it's not about a win. It's more about yolk. And yolk isn't what's in an egg. The yolk he's talking about is the yolk that they put on cattle that would, you know, make them serve in the right way. It was a wooden, basically, harness that went across the top of them. That's the yoke that he's talking about. And the yoke he's talking about is where he says, look, put that yoke upon me, on, upon you, because it's not going to be burdensome. 
It's going to be light. It's going to help you learn how to live life in the right way. But you learn it not by trying to follow the rules and regulations. It's not about a resume. It's about a response to a relationship with Jesus. It's about a response, a response to a relationship with God through the living God who walked this earth for us, who knows what we go through. You know, my problem in my life isn't that I never made that commitment and put that yoke upon me. The problem is that a lot of the times I'll have that yoke and either I'll leave that one on, but I'll put another one on too. I mean, throughout my life, I mean, I started to think, how many yokes have I put on my life? I mean, one of the most clear ones that a lot of people, I put the yoke of addiction, alcoholism on me, you know? (laughs) It started out where, man, I had a couple of beers. It was a lot of fun. I was the life of the party. But after doing that for probably about 30 years, To be up front with you, it got to the place where, you know, it controlled me more than I controlled it. That's for sure. And it started taking my life away because I had to have that substance. I got rid of that. But what other things, what other yokes have I put on myself? Well, the yoke that came to my mind more than anything else was that sense of codependency, that sense of trying to please everybody, make everybody else happy. I've been plagued with that since I was a little boy. I got to make mom and dad happy. I got to make, you know, the people around me happy. I got, I, somehow I got to live up to something that's maybe not even me, but I got to live up to it because, well, you know, somehow that will make me happy because if, I, if they're happy, I'll be happy. But it's never worked for me. Has it ever worked for you? I mean, do you have that yoke upon you trying to please other people? Do you have that yoke upon you that says, well, you know, your happiness is dependent upon whether or not everybody else has happy? Is the yoke upon you the one that says, well, unless I get all the deck chairs on the Titanic exactly right, well, then even if it sinks, well, I guess, you know, we'll be comfortable. What's the yoke? That you carry and what's the yoke you have to pass off and get rid of so that you can take on the yoke of jesus christ the yoke of jesus christ is very simple it's being in relationship with him and letting him come into your life and instruct you on things it's every day knowing that you're not alone it's trusting in a power greater than you who's personal with you to care for you. It leads you into ways where you get your mind off your own needs because he instructs you to serve others because it's in serving others that actually you're showing your love to him. You see, we don't earn love from God. We show love to God. We don't have to perform for God. We respond to God because God comes to us with his grace at every turn. And he says, look, for you to receive this grace, you got to be in relationship with me. Wear my yoke. It's not going to knock you to the ground. It's not going to be overwhelming. But look at the other yokes that you've had on your life all your life. Look at the things that you carry with you. Ask yourself a question. Is there anybody that you've resented for more than three weeks? And how many of you have resented people for more than three years or 30 years? Those are yokes that are carrying you down, that are not giving you life. They aren't really even giving you survival. Jesus doesn't want us to be overwhelmed with life. He wants us to be bearers of life. I don't think I'll ever win. Will you? You know, in the relationships that I have, when I try too hard about trying to get them to be so happy because, well, I'm dependent, I'm not happiness so that I can be happy, it never works. But when finally I get to the place where I say, I'll do the best I can, I'll trust in God, and I know his grace will make the difference for everything else. Then truly, 
There's something beyond happiness that I get, and that is grace. And it's in that grace that I get joy. And it's in that joy that I get life. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.